All right, so up until this point, we have primarily focused on yearly compound interest rates, aside from one or two example problems in our example videos. But in practice, interest might be credited more frequently than just one time each year. Some accounts may pay semi-annual interest or quarter annual interest or monthly interest, among other periods. And so when we look at these different interest rates, typically we're going to represent rates that are not yearly rates or non yearly rates with the letter J and we'll represent interest rates that are yearly with I. But sometimes when we have an account that has a rate that isn't yearly, we are still interested in knowing what our annual rate is over a one year period. And so that's the main focus of this lesson is to find what we call the annual effective rate, which is essentially just an annual interest rate that we have been using all along. But sometimes we want to know what that is, even if our actual rate for our account isn't yearly. And so that's where we come to this equation down here. This is our converter that allows us to go from a rate that is not yearly to a rate that is yearly. So we have 1 plus j to the m power where m is the number of periods per year. And then we're going to subtract 1 from that and we will get our interest rate i which we call the annual effective rate because it's how much we are earning every year. Whether or not we actually have that interest rate, it is a representation of what we did earn over that year from a rate that wasn't annual. Now this rate J could be taking place multiple times during the year, or it could be taking place for every so many years. So we could have an interest rate that only accrues interest every two years or every four years. It's pretty rare to see, but we could come across that in one of our problems. And so let's look at a few examples that use this formula to take an interest rate that doesn't take place every year and convert it into a rate that does take place every year. And that is going to be our annual effective rate. Let's take a look. So if we let J be a quarterly interest rate of 0.5%, so this is quarterly, what would be our annual effective interest rate? So remember, our formula is 1 plus J to the M periods, the amount of periods in one year, and then we'll subtract 1, and that'll be equal to our interest rate I. So in this case, what is M going to be equal to? Well, this is a quarterly rate, so it's going to take place four times a year. We are going to be compounding our interest four times a year. And so in this case, this means M will equal four. So now let's set up our formula with what we know. So we have one plus J, which we know to be 0.5%, and this is actually equal to 0 0.005 in decimal format. So we'll write 0 0.005 and we're gonna be taking it to the power of m, which we said is four because this is a quarterly rate, and this is going to be subtracted from one, and that will be equal to our interest rate i, our annual effective interest rate. So now let's solve. We'll have 1.005 to the fourth power minus one, it's still going to be equal to i, and then this is going to be equal to 1.0202, and I'm going to break it off there. There are more decimals though, minus 1, and that'll be equal to i. So then if we subtract that 1, we find that our interest rate is equal to 0.0202, or 2.02%. And so this is our annual effective interest rate if our quarterly rate for that year was 0.5%. And so in this scenario, we would call the quarterly rate here, J equals 0.5%, an equivalent rate of interest to the annual effective rate of 0 0.0202 or 2.02%. This is because they would result in the same accumulated values at each year in time. So notice if I were to use both of these rates and I, let's say I deposited $500 into an account and I let it sit for one year and it earns interest. If I multiplied it by one plus my annual effective rate, I'd have 1.0202 and that would be equal to $510.08. But if I put it in an account that had that J rate, where we are compounding interest quarterly with that interest rate of 0.5%, then we'd have 1.005 to the fourth power because it's being compounded four times for one year. This is also going to be equal to $510.08. And, eight cents. and so because these two give the same value, they give the same accumulation at the end of one year, that's why we call these equivalent rates of interest. This may be a quarterly rate, 
and this might be an annual effective interest rate, but they're still going to give us the same amounts at the end of one year. Now, if we only put it in for three quarters of a year, we would have more in our quarterly account because it's compounded every quarter, and this is only compounded every year, so it wouldn't have been compounded yet. But if we put it in multiples of years, they're going to be the same. So the reason why we learn this is because sometimes you're going to be given problems where your interest rate is not going to be yearly, but it would be way more convenient for you to calculate this scenario if it was yearly. So it's all about convenience and what you need to do for specific problems. One of the hardest curves in this course is learning how to accurately convert from different interest rates because a lot of the time you're just not going to get the interest rate that you wish you had and so you're going to have to convert it into what you need and that becomes way more important down the road when we look at different concepts such as annuities and all kinds of stuff so work on this now because it's going to be helpful in the future so now we'll look at a simple example here this is not as complex as the ones i was just describing but it is going to give us practice with finding an annual effective interest rate so george deposits money into an account that pays interest interest compounded monthly at a rate of 0.7%, what is his annual effective interest rate? So we see here that George has an interest rate of 0.7%. So we'll start by saying that J is equal to 0.7%, which is going to be equal to 0.007 in decimal format. And we know that it is a monthly compound interest rate. So our M, our number of periods per year, is 12 because there's 12 months in a year. So then let's write our formula. We have one plus J to the M power minus one is equal to the annual effective interest rate. So let's plug in what we have and work with it. Well, we have one plus 0 0.007 to the 12th power minus one, and that's going to be equal to I. So then we can simplify. We'll have 1.007 to the 12th minus one equals I, and then we'll have 1.0873 minus one equals I, which will give us our interest rate is equal to 0.0873 or 8.73%. And that would be our annual effective interest rate in this scenario for George. So it's really not too difficult. It's just a matter of converting one interest rate into another rate. But before I conclude this, there's one more thing we gotta talk about in terms of the annual effective rate. All right, and so one more thing that I wanna talk about here is that there's another way to calculate the annual effective rate given a certain scenario. So as you know, we have this future value formula where we have our deposit times one plus the interest rate to the number of periods n, and we have the alternate form of that equation where we have the accumulation at time t is equal to the original deposit or the accumulation at time zero times that accumulation factor where the accumulation factor is equal to that one plus i to the t power. It's essentially the same thing as this right here. So we have these two equations and we can actually use this second one to come up with a new equation that could be helpful given the right scenario. And so what do I mean by that? Well, imagine at time zero, you have a thousand dollars and at time equals one, or let's just say a year from now, you're going to have a thousand seventy dollars. And you wanted to know for that scenario, what is your annual effective interest rate? And if you just think about it for a few seconds, you can kind of do this without really knowing any formula. You can see that from time equals zero to time equals one, you earned $70 of interest, right? You had $1,000, now you have 1,070. So you must have earned $70 within that year because you didn't deposit anything, right? You just went from 1,000 to 1,070. So you know you earned $70. And by knowing that, you can actually find the annual effective interest rate by just dividing the amount of interest you earned by your initial deposit. And so I'll show that to you right here. We could take our $1,070, subtract the initial 1,000, and divide by that initial 1,000, and we would have 70 divided by 1,000, which would be equal to 0.07 or 7% interest, right? That would be our annual effective interest rate. And this would be true. If this was your value of I, right, that's your interest rate, and you plugged it into either one of these equations, and you used your initial deposit of 1,000, right? You plugged the 1,000 right here and your interest rate here and just did it for one year, you would find $1,070 would be what you accumulated or your future value for that scenario. And so this is a nice calculation that you may want to do sometimes. So it's nice to have an equation or a general formula to represent that. So in this specific scenario that we did right here, we found that the interest rate or the annual effective interest rate is equal to the accumulation at time one 
minus the accumulation of time zero, or the initial deposit divided by that initial deposit. And this was for the time interval from zero to one. And so we can actually take this formula here and generalize it for any time where we're looking at one particular period, where we're looking at one particular year. And this would be that the annual effective interest rate is equal to the accumulation at time t minus the accumulation at time minus one or t minus one divided by the accumulation at time minus one. And then this would be on the interval from t minus one to t. So for a one year period, you can use this equation to find your annual effective interest rate. If you were given how much you have in an account at a particular year, t minus one, and then you were given how much you have in one more period from there, or one more year from that point, which would be a of t, then you can find your annual effective interest rate with this formula. And just a quick note, we could have also found this formula by solving for i in our alternate formula at the top where we had the accumulation at time t equals accumulation at time zero times the accumulation factor. If we solved for i in that formula, we would get the result we have here. So it's not going to be used a lot. You're not gonna see a lot of scenarios like this where this will be used but it is still nice to know and actually will come in handy in some future problems for future lessons. So that's why I wanted to cover it here real quick because just seeing this is going to be helpful later on. All right, and so that's all I have for this lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I would recommend that you do watch our examples video for this topic that will be linked at the end of this video as well as in the description. There's gonna be a lot of new types of problems in there that deal with the annual effective interest rate that I think you're going to want to see. So be sure to watch that example video. But until then, I will see you next time.